All right, our next guest, we're bringing up Richard Vettiri. Richard, come on in. Hey, Amber, how are you? <laughs> Fine. So, sorry, taking a little longer tonight, but uh, I'm glad you hang, hung in there with us. So, Richard, um, you're an author, you're a filmmaker, you do every so much things. Well, how would you define yourself? How, how do you say, hi, I'm Richard, I do this? Uh, that's really good. Um, I think I say um, I'm a writer. Um, I write movies, plays, a couple books of poetry, seven novels. But anyway, it's a hard thing. I, I found out that you're a big fan of Carol Burnett. Yes. Yeah. Oh, how how could I not be? And you worked with Carol. Yes, Carol um, starred in my movie, The Marriage Fool, which yeah, which was done. Actually, it came out on CBS. It was the highest rated movie on CBS in 1998, and I just found out it is now on Amazon. So do you get money off that? You know what? <laughs> I just called the Writers Guild to find out where is my royalty set. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, now, were you on? Were you on the set? Yes, a little bit. Yeah, it was a play, and then the play was produced. The play was published, and then I got a pitch to producers Jack Roseman, and he brought it to CBS. They bought it. I wrote the teleplay. Um, she was she was really fun. I also have Walter Matthau and John Stamos in the in the movie too. So I was um, kind of star studded cast, and it was a lot of fun. One of our previous guests worked with uh, Carol Burnett and said she was just a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah, she was in a. This was a scripted piece, so um, she was. You know, she had questions about the character. You know, I had her from Queens, and she said, "Do me a favor, do a little rewrite that I'm originally from Oklahoma." I said, "No problem." I did that, and then on this, we were on the set one night, and she did that um, Tarzan thing she did for all the people watching her. She was amazing, and then she asked me to write a couple of lines for her. She goes, "I need something in the scene." I said, "I think I know what you want," and I wrote it right on a napkin or something. And but um, it, it was really one of the highest rated, and something I'm really proud about. How do you, how do you feel about that actor saying, "Hey, um, I want to say this instead of that"? I have found out that the really good actors always have some really good points, so I don't mind at all. Um, you know, I get the credit if it's good. So, <laughs> and I'm also an actor myself, which has really taught me an appreciation of actors what they have to go through, and. Um, in fact, I just got cast in a new movie. I do a table read tomorrow morning. So um, I, I, I understand that. And I've directed a little bit. So I'm, I've been fortunate that I could actually do it all, make a living from it and all that. Tell me more about your acting career. What has what, what that involved? Well, you know, I started um, when I was a little kid putting on plays in the backyard of my house in Queens, you know, charging a nickel. <laughs> and... Um, then I, I started making a living as a writer right out of Columbia Graduate School, so I didn't really have time to act. But I have to say, I was jealous about the attention, like you were talking about before, that actors get. Nobody cares about the writer. You know, no, no one has even interviews the writer. So I said, you know, I could act too, I think. And I failed miserably a few times. And now I'm really comfortable at it because it's something that I like to do as fun. Writing is like my soul, but acting is just like the physical. The physicality of it is what I love. What's your biggest role or what would uh, someone say? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Well, that? you know, I, I, I don't want to plug this place, but it's something called Fox Nation. I was cast as Lou Werner in a docudrama called The Great American Heist. I play a real guy. And that was a big role. Just came out. I am totally anti what we were talking about trump and all oh, the republicans are out of their minds so the fox nation thing um but i have to say i hear it's doing really well and i have the probably the the male lead paul savino is the narrator but i think on screen i have i have a pretty big part you froze there i'm sorry you said oh. paul was the narrator that, that's yeah, all i heard paul savino narrated uh the piece for um uh, for Fox Nation, whatever that is, I'm not even sure it's streaming though. But I hear it's doing really well. That was my big part. And what, what's your table read for tomorrow? I got cast in a movie called Third Third Week, and I play a working class guy 
who owns a tool and die factory in downtown. And I hired this young kid who's on parole. And um, that's all I really could say about it right now. So I'm looking forward to it. And we start shooting in two weeks. Is is that network or is that a movie? Or it's what, an independent what? film, which is always fun. And I like the independent because everybody is like really – there's, there's a little bit of stress, but it's not that stressful. Like I wrote a movie, my most successful vigilante, you know, came out in 83. And it is now, bam, called it a cult classic, the one of the best indie films of the 80s. And, you know, that took almost a year to shoot because he run out of money. Then he got to get money. And then but it wind up, you know, got me work in Paris, Rome, London. So I lived all over Europe writing screenplays for European producers because of that movie that's that's fascinating so what's your current book that's out on the streets uh, um well first off i just got a review of a book of mine that came out six years ago and a wonderful critic just said every writer should read the there you go every writer should read the writer's afterlife and that's about a writer who dies young at 44 years old and goes to the writer's afterlife and he meets Shakespeare and Emily Bronte and everybody, but he finds out he can't hang out with them because he's not famous enough. So he has two weeks to go back to life and see if he could change his destiny. What sparked that? What? What? How did that? Good question. Man. Good question. I was always interested in those artists that are unknown in their lifetime and then become incredibly famous. For instance, Kafka never wrote a novel. Never. Right. He. I think he published one or two stories. And there's a museum to him, or of course Van Gogh. So I was really interested in why some people are famous in their lifetime, and you and I wouldn't even know who they were right now. So that kind of thing, because fame is something that goes back, as the Bible said, fame is your name stretched out through time. So even Achilles went to the Trojan War to be famous, and he died there. So we're, human beings have been obsessed, especially in Western culture, with the idea of fame. And I, that's what The Writer's Afterlife is about. And I wanted, I wanted to talk to George about this. My memoir of the 70s, Live Fast, Die Young, Leave a Good Looking Corpse. Um, and that is about sex, drugs, and rock and roll when I was 21 in 1973. Um, Oh George! Oh oh! Uh, that, you 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 had fun. I can tell by that picture. You had fun. Oh my fun. God! Yeah, I, I had just won a literary award for poetry, but I, you know, it was it was the seventies, man. You know, it was like the early seventies. <laughs> you know, I whenever someone says, "Why do you do? Why did you do that?" I go, "It was the seventies. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. We 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 had fun in the seventies." Not only do we have fun, you got to remember, most people don't know, but possession of drugs was a misdemeanor. It wasn't until the Rockefeller Law in 1973 when it became a felony. So, you know, you got high, you had sex, and you looked great, at least for a few years, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah. You can know the 70s. Uh, I'm very fortunate that I came of age during the 70s. I'm Me too. Very happy about that. You had you had this table reading tomorrow, but what 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 other projects uh, do you have coming out in the next couple of months or so? Well, I'm I'm developing a new play. I just finished. The, I just wrote the end. Um, a two character, two women called Thornwood, um, about a woman whose daughter has uh, disappeared for thirty years, and a woman cop detective who's picked up the cold case. And then I'm having my world premiere of my play Zaguada which is going, yeah, there it just got published right before the pandemic. And it's about a, uh, it's set in Queens when a very old man is arrested for taking a shot at a journalist and his name comes up on Homesland Security that he's been wanted since he lied on his passport application in 1946 when he came to this country from Poland that he was a capo at Buchenwald. And... The woman of, for, that works for Homeland Security has a personal reason why she wants to find him. And um, in an odd way, it's a very tender story about a brutal time. And um, that is opening. I'm doing another reading in New York, but it's opening at the Ensemble Stage in North Carolina this September. 
Well, how exciting. How yeah. exciting. You've got some wide interests uh, and topics that you like to write about. What brought that on? What, what, what spurred your interest in all those things? Well, I, I'm from a, a neighborhood called Maspeth, Queens, where over the years, like the last 30 or 40 years, every once in a while, a German person would be arrested. It's a Polish neighborhood. I grew up in the Italian neighborhood. But somebody be arrested for being like working for a camp in Germany and they have a new life and they got here with a lie and they, and they get extradited to Europe. So uh, a few years ago, I uh, met a wonderful actress, Maya Wampuzik, whose father had survived the Nazis and the Russians. And um, I talked to him about it and I said, I got to write this play. So I wrote that play. And I've been also working for years on my screenplay on Caravaggio. It just won the Beverly Hills Golden Palm for Best Screenplay Award just last year. And I'm hoping to get the movie made. I've been talking to some Australian producers this year. So um, I, I get excited by a project. I get it. I just finished a play about Joe McCarthy, too, that Dan Lawyer is going to do a recording of. I get excited by a project and the people I research it and then I I have to write it. I have to write it. Wow, you are so prolific. That is so, yeah. so cool. Oh, my gosh. 